Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Today, there's going to be a pair of wide receivers looking to make big plays on the field. It's the Browns going up against the Lions. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, first open in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Ford Field tunnels, and the noise level in this place just about off the charts. They are set for football as the Lions get ready to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. The Browns rookie Zane Gonzalez ready to get us started. And we are underway from Ford Field. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. The arm has always been evident. The maturity has really increased in the last couple of seasons. How about 2016 for Matthew Stafford? Eight game-winning drives in the fourth quarter of overtime. The most by a quarterback in a single season in the Super Bowl era. In fact, one Detroit newspaper put the odds of all those comebacks occurring at 8.65 billion to one <laughs> it's crazy 8.65 billion to one i don't know that lightning will strike twice but what a season on first down at stafford and his first pass is incomplete And on this offensive unit, one guy that's proven himself early in the NFL is Eric Ebron. A very reliable target for a quarterback. They always love tight ends because they're right in their sight lines. If you get it to this guy, though, he can take it the distance. Second and 10, Stafford again. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to get it to TJ Jones that time. And that'll make it third down. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. Christian Kirksey is starting to come into his own as a linebacker. Rangy, fast, uses that speed to not only outrun blockers, but run down ball carriers. But at the end of the day, tackles really, really well. Second in the AFC in 2016 in total tackles. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Out of the gun, Stafford. This one complete to Theo Reddick. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. That's exactly what Detroit wants to do with Theo Riddick. Find a way to get him the ball on third down out of the backfield. Man's got excellent hands. The numbers bear that out. Two years ago, led all running backs with 80 catches. Ten games last year, 53 catches. So the offense has it first and ten. A first carry for Amir Abdullah. quarter lead you talk about explosion plays here's one pretty much right out of the gate and now they get to ride a wave of emotion momentum everything just as you just as you described right out of the gate big sprint touchdown they're excited but on the other side they've got a guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one 
And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up the touchdown on the opening drive. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it's Amir Abdullah that finishes it off with a touchdown run. Martin the putter now out to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Deshaun Kaiser, the former Notre Dame man, will lead his troops onto the field. And what an intriguing mix of arm talent ability to run the football, and moxie is Deshaun Kaiser. He has everything you're looking for in a starting quarterback in the NFL. Just has to prove it now by being a consistent player. This is Isaiah Crowell, and he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Second down following the run. Come on, let's go. Grand Grand Off the play fake, Kaiser. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. So here we go, first and ten now. It's Corral trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. And trying to give a lift to this offense today will be the Duke, the former Kane, Duke Johnson. Comes from a great tradition of runners at Miami of Florida. He's one of the best ones we've seen in recent years. And still needing 10 yards, second down. Come on, let's go. Again, it's Crowell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. And the starting crew defensively for Detroit. Detroit's numbers on defense in 2016 were not horrible. They were number 19 against the pass and number 18 overall. But where they think they'll make a big jump in 2017, 
is being able to get a pass rush going again. Ziggy Ansah, their star defensive end, played with a bad ankle for most of the season and wasn't able to duplicate his double-digit sack numbers of 2015. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser underneath for Johnson. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Kaiser now to throw on first down. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. On second down, here's Crowell. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. From the red zone now, Kaiser, a screen complete to Crowell. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Only three there on the screen at second down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. carry now this is Johnson and he will be brought down at about the six yard line it's a nice pickup of 12 yards and it gives him a first and goal we use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field in this case it really fits doesn't it how about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving First and goal, defense with their backs against the wall. Here we go. Five, nine. Five, nine. Five. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. They'll run with Crowell. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Ezekiel Ziggy Ansah with a tackle for loss. Just think he's still learning the game of football. Didn't play a heck of a lot of it in his native country. And at BYU, was just scratching the surface before he hit the NFL. Yeah, from Ghana, where he really liked soccer and basketball. But football's okay for him, right? Yeah, I think it's worked out very well. Drafted on potential, he's realizing it here. Now from back at the nine after that last play, this is third and goal. Come on, let's go. 
Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. Powerful running. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18 yard line. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. On fourth down, off goes Kaiser. On comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal attempt. This one from 35 yards away. And the kick by Gonzalez is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Well, let's go league-wide before this next drive starts. Last week, we discussed some of the trades that happened. Jay Ajayi did look pretty good in a Philly uniform. Long touchdown run. Boy, they really made a great deal to get him, and now they compare him with LeGarrette Blunt, and he kind of got a thunder-lightning type thing. And Ajayi showed some lightning against Denver. But how about this? Kelvin Benjamin went, but on a Thursday night game, not enough time to get him ready to play for his new team in Buffalo. Jimmy Garoppolo did not play with San Francisco. We'll find out when they both will get on the field. And how about the Saints in the Cardinals because remember the Adrian Peterson trade I think it benefited both teams yeah AP went over 100 yards Kamara and Ingram they really settled in as well he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete that would have been a great catch but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Stafford gives to Abdullah. Dancing away at the 35. Pretty good running there. Nine yards. Sets up a third and one. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. So just one yard to go here on third down. They'll run here. Abdullah. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. And partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. That one worked really well for them. They only needed a yard, instead went backwards. In his fifth year from Appalachian State, it's Sam Martin on to punt. Jabril Peppers is deep for Cleveland. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Lions defense gearing up as they take the field. And a big reason they've got the lead here in the first half, some of these hits we're going to see here. Almost like they're a group of superheroes, right? Something out of a comic book. Boom, pow, biff. They are really playing well and making things happen on their side of the ball. Taking me back to my childhood a bit. There you go. You had a collection, didn't you? I did. Now a 
play fake here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So flag for the contact pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. After the penalty, it's Crowell. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They were in the 4-3. Mike Linebacker made a great tackle. And when that happens, generally it means that the guys up front, the four down defensive linemen, have absorbed all the blockers and allowed him to run free to the football. He ends up with a textbook tackle. They'll run it again with Crowell. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Kaiser to throw it. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On first and 10, Kaiser. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. From the gun, Kaiser. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. They'll give him a yard on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware. Ball may come your way. The Browns on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and nine. They'll throw again. Kaiser. And this is going to be incomplete. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, you better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. He missed it just wide of that left upright. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Set, 
And they begin the drive with Abdullah. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. Play faked to Abdullah. It's Stafford. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. On third down, Abdullah. And he'll be brought down, but a tip of the cap on the spin move as that gives him a first down. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating them up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. Prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7-3 the score. We're back to the Motor City after this. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Here with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, as the Lions are in possession of the football here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Stafford. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now Stafford hands to Abdullah. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Lions on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, here's Stafford. It's caught, Jones! And he's gonna have the first down yardage to the 35. It's a nine yard gain and it keeps the drive moving. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've gotta read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Abdullah, and he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 
Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. On second down, here's Stafford. And that's going to be incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. The Lions on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and nine. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And that is incomplete. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball. And in an out route, plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot? Ball's out of his hands. Receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap, he counted in his head for certain routes, different time frames for each one, and he knew if the ball wasn't out of his hand at that point, he'd better eat it because the play was dead. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time where they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it, because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL, let's face that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come back now and redeem themselves? Yeah, because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. They begin with a run by Crowell. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. But we know one thing, Isaiah Crowell can run if given an opportunity. Had the longest run in the NFL in 2016, an 85-yard touchdown sprint week two against Baltimore. This one not quite as long, didn't end in six, but still a great game. here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Ricardo Lewis, 45 yards. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller but they retain their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. 
fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Stafford on first down. Ebron caught left side. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Stafford now on second down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. seven this time that throw good for four it's second down well the strategy was evident there get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback who's usually going to win that one the tight end but not there not in this situation how about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle throwing again at stafford and Jones has it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Stafford. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. down at Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Joe Schobert coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes.
A second down run for Abdullah. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The Lions on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 14. Operating from the gun, Stafford. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. The number one overall pick, Miles Garrett. And that's going to make it fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. How much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and that will knot us up at 10. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. down carry now for Crowell and a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20 credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine and that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense especially against teams that run the ball really well because you count on your defensive front the tackles and the ends to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle in this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Now Kaiser throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. The eighth-year man from Tennessee, this is Britton Colquitt on to punt as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Fielded just inside the 30. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards, and the Lions will take over. 
The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now a first down throw, Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. That'll bring up second down. Well, with that pass going awry, Charles, I hate to discuss this, but we need to. Deshaun Watson goes down with an injury, ACL tear done for the season, and boy, that's tough. It is extremely tough, especially when we do everything possible to protect players in practice, to make sure you have good practices, no injuries. And it just happened on a routine, normal play. And when he gets back... And the Browns' pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. the gun. Stafford. And he's caught on his sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Hand off to Crowell, and he is knocked down from the side. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Here's a give to Crowell. And some room to work. And they do finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 41. A big play that time for Cleveland. 52 yards on the ground. down throw for Kaiser. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We'll come back to Ford Field after this. Go! 
Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Three yards remaining here on second down. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Fresh set of downs here. Here's Kaiser. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. A second down throw now for Kaiser. Going to throw right side here, complete. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Kaiser yet again. That's complete right around the eight. And he's brought down. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. First and goal. Let's go. Grand, They'll try and punch it in with Crowell. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half.
this will be the ninth play on this drive. Second down, Kaiser. And he fires one that's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they'll throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. After the interception, here's Stafford. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. And now it's second down. I want to switch gears for a second. A couple exciting plays last week in the <laughs> NFL. One you and I were discussing earlier. How about that Tyree kill play into the first half in Dallas? Yeah, we usually use the word gate with everything, right? Now it's Mary when it's big plays like this. So this is the Hill Mary, isn't it? <laughs> Putting that big wall in front of him. But how about the moves, the elusiveness to break that play against Dallas? Absolutely amazing. And then Sammy Watkins for the Rams. Yeah. Third and 30 plus. Not only did they convert, he scores a touchdown against the Giants in New York. And the first time someone in the NFL has converted a third and 30-plus in the 21st century. Hard to believe. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Shot before the break, Stanford. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with a pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of his first half of play. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. Right now, we've got a tie game, and that just means exciting football for us in the second half, as we'll have two teams playing two quarters to decide a winner. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, Abdullah's gonna break into the secondary, and this run goes for a touchdown. He'll take the early advantage. First and 10, the long ball will find his mark here. After the long pass, he'll score. The Browns go up by a field goal. Lions take over late in the second. Defense is going to come away with the sack. This goes for a loss of nine. Still a little time left on the clock. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Slays and Tappy to come away with the pick and end the drive. Okay, thank you, Larry. A low-scoring affair all even as we ready for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. 
Deshaun Kaiser making his way out to the huddle. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. Second half begins with a run by Crowell. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Kaiser now over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now they'll bootleg it with Kaiser. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Kaiser now to throw on first down. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. A pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides, where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? On the run, it's Crowell. And some room to maneuver. Got some real estate inside the 30. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon. And I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On, on first and 10, Kaiser. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Come on, let's go. One, Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. 
We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Five yards to go for the offense. First down and goal from that five-yard line. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try and run for it with Crowell. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. working with a second and goal now from the three. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Isaiah Crowell, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Browns have moved out in front. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Gonzalez to add the PAT. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it's capped off by an Isaiah Crowell touchdown run. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. So we get a look at the Lions' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. The carry here for the big tight end. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Now it's Stafford off the bootleg. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Stafford finding his big tight end, Ebron, for a lion first down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. A handoff to Abdullah, and he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him three on first down, 
It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the gun, here's Stafford. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Lions on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and seven. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Detroit. And this will be taken at the 13. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And we shift our focus to Isaiah Crowell. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a bat, because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll try the right side with Crowell. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, and sometimes that just happens. It is the NFL. They will make some plays against you. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Crowell. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. This is Crowell, and he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. So second and medium, second and five now. Now a handoff, Johnson, and running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Kaiser from the gun on third. And he'll be out of bounds 
just shy of the 40. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They go play action here on first down. Ebron caught left side. And a nice gain of 21 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the gun, Stafford throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, on that incompletion, let's discuss how week nine on Sunday, November 5th, there was a full moon, and there yes. were some full moon happenings in the NFL, wasn't there? There certainly were, and think about it this way. Blair Walsh, who was 16 for 17 in field goals when the game began against Washington, he missed three for Seattle in that game. Might have been the difference. Julio Jones. Yeah, drop pass in the end zone that could have won the game. When does Julio Jones drop passes, especially open as he was there? And how about two teams putting 51 points on the board? The Los Angeles Rams against the Giants. And, of course, Philadelphia did it against Denver. Denver, the number one defense in the league. Full moon. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves them needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, it's hard to get them started again occasionally. Throwing on third down, Stafford. It's caught, Jones. And that one good for 16 yards and a first. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Play fake here on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Second and 10, Stafford. That incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. On third down, Stafford. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. And it's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now the offense lining up first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Here's Stafford now on second down. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. On first down, Abdullah. And he'll take this one inside the 10, down to the 8. A gain of three, second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. On second down, here's Stafford. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Lions trailing, but with possession of the football as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. Now the Notre Dame man, this is Theo Riddick. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. He gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told. But they're still looking at a fourth down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. 
And that will cut this lead back down to four now at 17-13. So an interesting call there to take the three. I guess they're thinking their hands were tied, but in the fourth quarter, that field goal, it really might not help them much at all. Yeah, I mean, you still need a touchdown. Another field goal does you no good, so it'll be interesting to see what the media reaction is if the score stays where it is. It's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Crowell. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here, so now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Second down, Johnson. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Browns on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. Let's go! One, nine. One, nine. From the gun, Kaiser. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Higgins. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. A 
And Detroit getting set to go now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. <laughs> I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe <-bashed. laughs> I don't know about toe -bashed that. Toe-bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Now a first down throw, Stafford. It's complete to Golden Tate. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That goes for a gain of 31. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. and 10 Stafford his throw incomplete Golden Tate his intended receiver and that'll bring up second down but not to get too over critical there because he knows what he's doing but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that I don't think you're being overly critical there you're just analyzing it and he gets those shoulders right that pass will go from incomplete to complete Second and 10, Stafford again. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. And now the Browns coming out on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lent up. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Again, it's Crowell. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D line. Probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. Come on, let's go. Throwing again is Kaiser on second and ten. 
over the middle, and it's incomplete. Isaiah Crowell, the intended target, and it's third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Browns on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. Going long for Coates. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Those storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Polk went on to kick as he sends it away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score now. Yeah, true. I mean, we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Looking downfield for Jones. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. <laughs> on first down, Stafford here. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. To throw again, Stafford. And Jones has it over the middle. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Lions on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. Here it's third and two. Off the bootleg. Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Emmanuel Ogba in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Sam Martin now. He's been terrific so far. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And the Browns. 
Brown's getting set to go. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. time to the tailback and for one of the few times here today this run's not going to go anywhere no gain on the play it'll be second down but Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage they've got the football but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play you know my, my music teacher back in New Paltz Mrs. Bythema Bagley used to say don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo and what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try to move forward. That'll move the sticks for the Browns. A gain of 12. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. down and he'll get this one up to the 26 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down offensively with the lead you want to run the ball keep the clock going but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too right so how do you do that and not come back on your heels yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So the offense has it first and 10. Kaiser. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. David Njoku was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. <laughs> Take your word for it, my man. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. Let's go. Well, first down carry here for Johnson. 
A decent run there following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down, here's Crowell. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The Browns on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. Come on, let's go! One, two, one. They'll try to run for it with Crowell. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. is the pick up there and they'll be faced with a third and inches this defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far they're not putting up much of a fight if they don't get a stop here soon this game could be over for them The offense on third down tonight, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. 
And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Only a one-yard gain, but good enough to just about finish this one off. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long, everyone. From